Dead wax. What's up, all you barbs trapped in the upside down? And welcome to the Dead Wax Show. You better get out of the mother freaking groove and get into the mother freaking Dead Wax. I am Waffles, and as always, I am joined by my older brother and best friend, Stooge. Stooge, including Stranger Things, how are you? Um, you know, it's a mixed bag, Waffles. I'll tell a mixed you that. Bag. A mixed bag. I do appreciate the... Uh, what is now like a five-year-old reference um, in the opening there. Amen. Uh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> Way to keep, uh, keep this relevant. Um, 2017 was a simpler time. Yeah. Jeez. Um, um, you know, it's, 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 this week's had its ups and downs. You know, it's, uh, it's had its upside downs. Yeah. It has its upside downs too. Very nice. Very nice Thank there. You. Thank you. Um, you know, it was, it was great. I've, I've hauled through a lot of TV. Maybe that's why I'm so tired. If you notice that mm. hauled through a lot of TV with Obi-Wan coming out and oh, Stranger things. Yeah. Um, so I've watched all of those already. So it's been a lot of TV watching. I think that's maybe why I'm kind of tired. Like I just said, um, but you know, there was, there's a huge cloud looming over this whole week. And as a parent, I feel somewhat obligated to, to mention it, even though we're not that kind of a, of a show. Oh, we can do but, whatever show we want. But the things that happened in Texas this week, um, it's really kind of impacted my entire week. And, you know, I definitely didn't have as bad as a week as some of those people had. Um, anyways, I know. I know we didn't talk about this before the show. I'm kind of blindsiding you. But, um, yeah, we need um, – I'm sure you feel the same way, though. Like, there needs – we there's something needs to be done. You know, we need to stop Absolutely. talking about it and being about it. And, um, you know, there's, there's, uh, what's it called? Primaries or there's midterms or whatever coming up. Oh, like, elections, and, 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 so? yeah, elections. Yeah, yeah. Um, you need to get out there and vote for people who are going to do something about this. Absolutely. So, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's ridiculous, embarrassing, and very shameful that we still have this happening so frequently. Yep. Um, I won't get any more into it besides that. Um, but we, we definitely need to, to make changes, uh, yep. Kids dying in schools is something that shouldn't be happening. Those shouldn't be words that we put together yeah. and, and make into a sentence, you know. So, yeah. Sorry if I'm uh, bringing the show down right from the get go, but That's it, okay. it needs to be done. It's important it's to talk like about. Yeah. Our show, our show, I know our show is usually a distraction from stuff like that, but there's some things that are more important than a distraction from what's Absolutely. going on in the real world. So, anyways, I just want to start with that. But yeah, that's how my week's been going. It's it's really been overshadowed. Yeah. Um, by the tragedy we had in Texas this week. So anyway, I would, I would agree though, just to put a pin on it is that actions speak louder than words. So whether you are someone, just a normal person like us, whether you're a politician, it doesn't matter. We have mm-hmm. got to do something because sitting on our duff and just posting about it doesn't do anything. So uh, taking action. That's what's great about humanity is that we can. So mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. So registered vote. Make sure you vote for those who are gonna, you know, back comments and educate sense yourself. Stuff. Absolutely, educate yourself oh, yeah. on who's running. Yep, mm-hmm. definitely. Um, kids are dying, so you make sure you educate yourself. Anyways, um, all right, uh, that's that's all I want to get off my soapbox now. I just felt okay. like I had to say it, and um, nope, I'm glad you, know, you said it. I'll, I'll try to provide as the uh, relief from this kind of nonsense throughout the rest of the show. Okay, deal. Awesome. No, I'm glad you brought it up. Anyways, all right. Um, so uh, pickups. Hey, pickups. As, as Just smooth like as a transition. As smooth as a transition last week. Get. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Stooge, Stooge, tell us about these pickups you got this last week. Um, so I technically broke my. Well, I guess I shouldn't say technically because I technically broke my no buy when I went to Amoeba earlier yeah. this month. But I did break my no buy this past week. Um, well, that's I, very long though. But I, I only bought a single. It was Bismarcky. And um, it's just a friend single that came out on a red color vinyl. I, I wish I would have pulled it out beforehand. But um, the reason I picked that up is because I also went I went to a record store yesterday, a really good record store in Provo, Utah. What what to pick up my free copy of Nancy and Lee, which what? we won. That's right online through Three Hives uh, contest. 
So here's my copy right here. I picked yours up as well, Waffles. So whenever Thanks, the next time we see each other, I'll bring it with us. Yeah. So there's there's that copy. That's actually the only pickup besides the single I've got this week. Nice. And I've also got to share my oh, Nancy. My Nancy and Lee like it. <laughs> it's huge. Holy yeah. cow. I'm, I'm currently using it to keep my, my feetsies warm because believe it or not, it's freaking cold in Utah still. Bro, I've got my blanket on too. On is it feetsies. your soft skill? It certainly is. <laughs> See, this is like one of those cotton quilted kind of yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, you know? it's a nice so, one. Yeah, I'm like excited. Stereo, stereo, stereo. I can't even That's do this cool. correctly. Anyways, yeah. So, yeah, you got your blanket here as well. You want me to sleep with it a couple of times? To get the great. smell in it? All right. Snuggle with it, yeah. <laughs> but after you've gone to the gym or whatever. Um, okay, definitely. Deal. Yeah, while, we, while we do talk about music and we're young and virile, we're also old men trapped in younger bodies because we are recording this with blankets on our laps and legs. So, <laughs> and we're talking about records. So maybe we are just old people. Yeah, uh, definitely. I got some pickups. That I, that oh they're yeah, all real, they're all really pretty. So oh, this is gonna be fun. Show me the show me the pretty records. The first one. Um, this uh, this one is not as like big of a deal, I guess. I don't know. Not that not that hey, we've hey, done it. Hey, but, they're uh, all a big deal. There you All go. Right. This is the Alkaline Trio. Uh, I guess it's like the self-titled, It's like one of I your guess. favorite bands. It is. But the reason most people don't freak out about this is because most people don't know about it. Uh, uh -huh. This is a compilation of their first two seven inches, their first two demos all put together on one record. Um, I think people who are Alkaline Trio fans would love to know about that. Thanks, pal. Um, but the other thing that's really cool about this is this is from Asian Man Records. And this is just a quick Ooh. shout out to when you are like on a website for a record – and you can su do email me, notify when available. I did that for this. And before they went on the store, he emailed me and said, hey, I just got these in. One can be yours right now. So there you go. Nice. nice. But it came out on this really pretty, uh, like, I guess they call it like toxic green. Because <laughs> it's got like yellow and dark green and white into it. So really sick. But this is fun because this is before they had their first album. So it's just a bunch of like, or like I guess they were released demos. But stuff that's all finally together onto one thing. Nice. Next like one. It. Next one is by a band I love called Grey Haven. It's called This Bright and Beautiful World. Um, this album just came out this year. It's it's fantastic. But this really is variant. I love when they put Ooh. Blue and Pink together. I love Blue and Pink records. I think they that looks really look good. Cool. Yeah. Grey Haven, uh, they're like an experimental metal band, experimental metalcore kind of thing. Um, because they can go crazy wild bananas and then a little bit soft and melodic. Is um, that just like experiment mean like they're they're experimenting with drugs? Is that what the experimental sure. stands for? Sure. Experimenting with drugs, maybe experimenting with science. Or are they are they experimenting yeah. with music? It's like, yeah, we don't do this. Like I'm really a carpenter. They're like, I've never even tried. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what is this called? Funny? A, a guitar? Like what I, do you <laughs> do you know what's funny too is if there was ever a band where people had never played the instruments before is their first time playing, I would probably sit and talk about for 10 minutes why it's what, like the best thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Like <laughs> I would be that person. It's like, this is brilliant. I love this. Anyway, Grey Haven, fantastic band. Uh, They're going to be here in Utah in June. And uh, one of my favorite bands, the Callous Dowboys, is playing with them. And Callous Dowboys, if you're watching, can't wait to see you in a few weeks. We've already talked about hanging out. Last record, though. Ooh. I'm friends with them. They're, it's welcome. Uh, but anyway, last record is actually a humongous deal. If you all know, my favorite band is Straight From The Path. And this is their album, Rising Sun. Um, it is often known as like the forgotten stray album because even the band doesn't even really like it. <laughs> it's like a record that they kind of just made to make it. But so it's like the, the uh, what's the lesser known Baldwin? Billy It's like the Billy Baldwin. Is even that one Billy of is better known than like, uh, <laughs> isn't there like a Donnie? <laughs> Maybe oh, well, I guess. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, Alan, like Alan. This is this is like the Billy Baldwin of their discography. Because it's just not very well known. They don't really play songs from this anymore. Um, but it was the last uh, studio album by Stray that I didn't have. The reason it took me so long is because these are usually two hundred dollars. They only made they only made five hundred of them uh, ten years ago. So, but this one came out pretty too. Mm, nice. Um, and uh, I even I I swear I, I'm not trying to sound like a dick, but I'm gonna sound like a dick. I'm also friends with Stray, <laughs> and so I was talking to their guitarist Tom. And I said, hey, I finally got Rising Sun. I'm so excited. 
And he goes, that is so cool. I hate that album. (laughs) He he very much does not like it. So he's like, I'm happy for you. That's so cool. I don't like it. (laughs) But but it was super fun. So that's funny. Finally, I have all those Stray Studio albums. It's my final Infinity Stone. And now I can snap. Nice. And half of our listeners turn into goats. Half of our what turn into goats? Listeners. Oh, nice. Half Goats. of our pissiners, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so just a quick uh, recap for all of this. Um, Stooge and I are not super high energy today, so we're trying our hardest <laughs> to to just... Oh, wait. Fist it. Fist it. Yeah. I love when you say that. Yeah. Look at that. Mm. All right. Anyway. Well, we're going to do a thumb more. <laughs> <laughs> one two three, two, three four, four. Four. I, I, the, <laughs> yeah super entertaining uh, if you're listening to it on the podcast did you ever see I that bet. movie thumb wars nope is it good thumb wars okay 10 second tangent thumb wars was a movie where they made puppets that look like thumbs and they recreated star wars with it <laughs> it's only like 30 <laughs> minutes long but the the humor it's by the same guy that made the movie kung pao and okay it is, it is so ridiculous and they made a bunch of them. They made Thumb Tannic. And then there was another one with thumbs. Anyway, it is so funny. <laughs> Have they not done thumb- Thumbelina with the thumbs yet? No, can you even believe? I-, I wonder if the other one was Top Thumb instead of Top Gun. I'm nice. trying to remember what the other one was. Anyway, uh, if, you remember to- if you remember Thumb Wars, comment below. Uh, so, <laughs> Stooge, anything else before we transition no. into our... No, let's, let's, let's transition. Okay, deal. Into today's topic. Into today's topic. So, it's May twenty eighth. We're filming you, this. Maybe tonight? that's what we should say. It, no, it is like May twenty ninth. It is like tomorrow's oh, yeah, Memorial yeah. Day. When this comes out, tomorrow's it's Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. Yes, which is I think a very conflicting for some people. I don't know if conflicting is the right word, but it could be an emotional day for a lot of people. Absolutely, remembering Absolutely. The, the the you know men and women who served our country and and. and lost their lives yep. um in battle essentially so yep. yeah like it, for a lot of people it's like hey day off of work fire up the grill but for a lot of people it's like dude i lost my dad it's going and, to the cemetery you know, yeah yeah it's 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 a lot a lot more um gut-wrenching of a, of a holiday yep. so you know to everybody out there to to the five listeners we have if any of you have <laughs> someone who lost somebody you know we we're really sorry and you know we appreciate yep. their service and their sacrifice so yep whether whether they were like a veteran or not, Memorial Day is a good day to just remember those who have passed on. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, but with it being Memorial Day, we are just about at the midpoint of the year, right? We're 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 at the <laughs> is midpoint. that sign language? <laughs> this is the midpoint of the year, everybody. Get into it. <laughs> the midpoint. This is the midpoint. If you're if you're just listening, I'm just doing some stupid thing with my hands. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anyway, we're like halfway through the year. <laughs> and uh, 2022, as you all you all know this, you listen, you've seen, Stooge and I do love music, but we like very different styles of music. However, 2022 has been an amazing year just for new music in general. Like, I've been shocked at how high quality a lot of the releases are. I do feel like there's been less than 2021, but at this point, my list was a little bit longer. But I mm-hmm. still think the quality of this year is higher than last year's was. So... Okay. What we want to do is talk about at this point in the year, we're halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> Q1 and Q2 are over. Q- quarter one and quarter two of, of, uh, of 2022 are just about over. So we're just going to go over our top three albums so far of 2022. Stooge, do you have all yours on vinyl? I do have mine on vinyl, yeah. I do as well. And I don't think, I think all of mine aren't going to be that big of a secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> uh, but why don't you start us off? Do you, you want to do like three, two, one, or is your sure. yours in any particular order? Not necessarily. Well, I guess I can put them in order. I think I got. A, you don't have to if you don't want. We can just no. go. Okay. We're gonna do it in order. All okay. Right. Look at so. Can I make that face one more time? Mm. Okay, it's a weird sound. Mm. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop. I swear. Okay, dude. <laughs> uh, what is your number three? Let's start with that one. My number three. Zarmageddon. Um, you know, like I said, every album that they put out, I love. Yeah. Um, this one though has some really good beats on it that I really, really enjoy. And 
you know, just look at that cover, dude. That's so a freaking good. awesome cover. And uh, yeah, I love this album. If you if you like hip hop, you gotta check it out. I really don't know what I can add to it. It's it's a shorter album. I'll say that. It's oh, one is of it? the shorter ones. It's only like thirty minutes long. That seems to be the trend for some of the albums I've been getting this year. Is a lot shorter. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's Tarek Seven L and uh, Inspect the Deck. They bring it again in Zarmageddon. Uh, if you like hip hop, you like boom bap style, especially, you got to get this album. Heck yeah. Get your hands on it. And then get those uh, greasy mitts spin it round and round. I, I honestly, I listen to this at least once a week, and it's usually more. Than oh, that. heck yeah, yeah. So, anyways, that's, that's how you can always tell like quality of an album is if you just keep spinning it over and over and over again. Yep, yep, love that. Zarface, also, shout out Zarface. We know you love us, you love Stooge specifically, but I'm like. Love by pro- association. Yeah. <laughs> by by the way, if you're looking to get some Zarface gear, they've got 25% off this weekend for Memorial Day weekend. So oh, look at you, influencer. How's that influencer? <laughs> Use code Stooge for 25% off. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, you got there is a code you have to use, like big em up or something like that. Big em up. Okay. My number three. Um, I'm worried if the cover's inappropriate. Oh there, there's exposed male butts. Oh. Oh, is it that mom jeans one? It is mom jeans. Legs? I'll just use my hand over it. It's mom jeans. <laughs> so this should I show it? <gasps> oh my <laughs> eyes! Your eyes! I've been Your defiled by eyes. nudity. <laughs> you were so innocent before. Anyway, this my is security is gone. This is sweet tooth by mom jeans. Uh, and mom jeans, fantastic emo pop punk band. The the pressing for this came out really pretty too. It's like. Half white, half blue. I really like half and half. So we talked about this last week. But. It looks like that childish Gambino pressing. Sure. Yeah. Totes. totes okay, totes. it's childish Gambino. Yeah. Um, this is America. Period. I really don't know anything about childish Gambino, you guys. I'm so sorry. Anyway, I, I know very little as well. Uh, Sweet Tooth by Mom Jeans. This album is a 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, I am, I've not, I'm not like an ancient mom jeans fan. I knew their first album kind of waited a long time to get into the rest of the stuff. So when this album came out, I was shocked how good it was. Uh, mom jeans is great. Shocked, if you really enjoy shocked to you it just shocked me. My hair went in 10 directions because I had stuck my finger into the outlet. They're uh, so good. Let's, let's hope it's the outlet anyway. Um, so mom jeans, this, this album has a bunch of great songs. Mom jeans continues to be like, the band that won't go away in a good way because uh-huh. they do face controversy. They face um, What's negative the controversy. One of their guitarists name is Bart. Um, some people called him like a bully in high school, which you'd think, wow, that's such a controversy. We're talking about emo kids and they take that way more personal than like anything. Well, it, what, was all, it was all, it was all bully. Also, I don't know. That's the whole thing. Is like, was, was he just, a, was he giving kids swirlies or was he like, Facebooking them to kill themselves, like yeah, <laughs> that could be a lot a of questions. Things. Yeah, I don't really know the whole details, but anyway, uh, "Sweet Tooth" by Mom Jeans. I love it. I've listened to it a million times, um, and it's really fun to listen to because it's it's super like. What's a good way of saying this, Stooge? There is a movement in emo right now where the song names and the bands themselves, the band names, are ridiculous and stupid, but the lyrics are shockingly depressing. <laughs> so, like. Uh, it's, it's mom jeans are sort of carrying that torch yeah. where the names are dumb. Then you read the lyrics and you go, Oh my gosh, is he okay? So I love it. I, I thought that was mom all of, all of emo was always like that. I thought, 100%. yeah, probably now that we're having this realization. Yeah. All right. Number two, numero I, dos. I your number two. Yeah. It is dropout boogie by the black keys. The dropout boogie by the black keys. Once again, just another solid album from the Black Keys. Um, another one that's only about 30 minutes long. It's really mm-hmm. short, even though there's 10 tracks on it. Um, my favorite one is Wild Child. I know that's the single, but it just it brings oh, the, most, a great song, though. the most funk and the crunch. Um, yeah. But the whole thing's good. Like, there's, um, um, I can't remember if it's Baby I'm Coming Home or Didn't I Love You. It's like one of the, the final songs on the track. It sounds like it's straight out from like the seventies, like yeah. just the the style, the solo, everything. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is this came out this year, so um, yeah, these dudes freaking kill it. You know, I'm biased. I, I'm I'm a black key simp, so they that's can't so do any wrong in my eyes. They could like you know kick babies, and I'd be like, eh, that's the black keys. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so kick um, babies, yeah. So yeah, uh, dropout boogie, 
uh, Waffle Sun listened to it, so I think I have. Should... Oh, you have listened to it now? Mm-hmm. Okay, never mind. I was gonna. I just didn't tell you. I'm sorry. I was gonna suggest the listeners bully you on the internet. <laughs> well, they will anyway. Just y'all do anyway. So go for it. Just keep on, keep on, keeping on, everybody. <laughs> bully waffles. Bully um, waffles. You know what's funny is I've become like on TikTok and in social media. Anyone who follows me, like I think, knows me now as like the resident Black Keys expert. I cannot 100%. tell you how many people in the last month have reached out to me, like, "Hey, so I'm not. I haven't really checked out the Black Keys. Where should I? Like, what, what would you recommend I listen to?" And, like, that's awesome. It's like a weekly thing now. <laughs> that's way cool. Good for you, dude. That's so. a, that's a. There's so many worse things to be on the internet. So I, <laughs> I think that is genuinely a great thing. Be like the resident anal plug guy, but no, the Black Keys. <laughs> <laughs> it's a much better thing to be right <laughs> oh you guys we can't even finish this episode now because <laughs> this dude is just the resident butt plug guy butt plug dude oh gosh what am i even supposed to say now <laughs> well this is mine <laughs> speaking of number twos and butt plugs. speaking of butt plugs <laughs> yeah well actually this isn't a bad transition speaking of butt plugs uh my second one is Prince Daddy and the Hyena. <laughs> uh, so, same thing. I'm such a simp for this band. And I only started liking them, like, last year. But this new album of theirs is so shockingly good. But I will say, many people don't know what the music they create is because the name is kind of ridiculous. So, it does get lumped into the pop-punk world a lot. However, Prince Daddy and the Hyena is a big throwback to 90s music as well. Uh, there's a lot of grunge and alternative rock influence in here that makes it very fun. I talked to a friend on Instagram. His name is Jonathan. What is his Instagram handle? Davis. <laughs> Jonathan Davis. It was Jonathan Davis from Corn. And I said, Prince Daddy's really good. And he went, Rada, inda, inda, Rada, inda. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he didn't say twist. <laughs> twist. <laughs> yeah. Gosh dang it. What's that? Okay. Anyway, you know, the Jonathan... album. The album looks really scary, by the way. It's, yeah. Like a creepy is, is that a clown? kid or is that a doll? I don't know. It's some kind of good question. Clown yeah, good question. Thing. Uh, it looks like it's gonna murder me if I saw that. Pretty cool if, on this. It's just blue, a little bit of white blue. marbling, kind of like blue. the boys in the band. They're all blue. The blue. I'm blue. Da bin dee ba da 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 ba pi pi boo 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 boo. Um. Amen, Stooge. But Amen. seriously, dude, like if you were to put that that if I were to walk into my door late at night and that was the first thing I saw. I'm staying somewhere else for that night. I, yeah. I am burning the house You've down. It. You've had it yeah. at that point. Yeah. The house yeah. on Haunted Hill. Yeah. yeah. It could like offer me cake. He's like, hey, you want some cake? I'm like, it's the devil. Yeah. That is. But is that why they call it devil's food cake? Devil's fruit cake? Devil's food cake. You mean like deviled eggs? No, devil's food cakes, dude. I have no idea what devil's food it's cake is. It's a kind of chocolate cake. It's not even that like special. Why are you sounding like a, a gun? Why are you because sounding it's like not a, that a crazy. New York grandma? It, it, because it, like, if, if I was like, person. oh yeah, this like special cake only found in Queens, New York. No, we're talking about devil's food. That is very common, Stooge. Is it like the sheet cake stuff, or is that Texas sheet cake? That's Man, I can't get my cake straight. Cake. We need to have like <laughs> I mean, a cake one hundred and one. Your, your cakes are always moving around. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> number two is Prince Daddy and the Hyena. Great oh, album. Man. I highly recommend. Even if. If, if, like, pop punk's not your thing, but even if you like bands like um, Blind Melon, it is a great throwback to stuff like that. So, what if you don't like bland, bands like Blind Melon? Then you can leave because Blind Melon was the bomb. Okay. Do you not like Blind Melon, Stooge? No, I, I, I like uh, this, that one song. I, no I can't rain. really say if I like it. Yeah, because I really had listened to, like, you know, I don't want to pretend like I'm like, oh, yeah, Blind Melon, they're so great. You have a Blind Melon really. tattoo, just. Yeah, I got the yeah. girl in the bee suit. That's you know, that actually be a bomb. A bomb. It's a great. It's a great. Uh, it's a great music video. Bomb tattoo. It is it's a great, great message. So, yeah. and that girl in that is probably like what fifty seven now. But anyway, yeah, she's she does a, a great senator. job. Yeah. She does a great job in that video. That was actually Margaret Thatcher. Isn't that crazy to think? <laughs> <laughs> Dame right, Judy Dench. She was Dame was. Judy Dench. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was Tilda Swinton in her greatest role yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right dudes you're number one the number one my number one oh, fear of the dawn of by jack white of course this, um, so i got it on this little pretty like smoke uh Freak blue out, variant thing let me see if i can pull it out for you oh, please do i'm gonna prepare oh, cool. oh, oh wrong way 
Anyways, um, yeah, so this is my favorite one because, like, you know, the, the Black Keys album is great. It's a little more of a slower tone, though, overall on the songs, which isn't yeah. bad. That's the style they just went with. Yeah. Where this one brings a little bit more of the heat, I would say, uh, in the music. And then they got freaking Q-Tip from A Tribe Called Quest. Or I shouldn't say they. Jack got Q-Tip to come on one of the songs. And I almost, like, you know, did a dirty thing in my pants when I saw that single announced. Um Heidi Ho bite with Jack uh, White and uh, Q Tip, so good. But like, there's a lot of songs in this. Are just they bring a lot of fire, a lot of the heat, a lot of the Jack White fuzz and yep. grunge that you all come to love and expect. So, um, yeah, this is my favorite one of the year so far. Just it. uh, it's great, it's good stuff. And he's got another one on the way, so I'm excited for that one too. When does that come out? I want to say in July or August. So That's not very crazy far. to have two albums just come out that soon and, yeah. and he released a single off the second one that came out earlier this year maybe it was last year even it's a slower song shoot what's it about what's it i can't remember what it's called now but probably it, three it's minutes great yeah. it's great i was i was when this came out i'm like why isn't that song on this one and then i looked up yeah. like oh it's gonna be on the next one so anyways um, good stuff so i yeah. love that you're the resident you know butt plug uh expert and you're also into the Black Keys and Jack White, and all of that mixed together into "I'm about to ruin these pants." Yeah, it just—it was the circle of life that uh, that I honestly was part of, and it was really yeah, cool. Just yeah. call me Simba. If you're Simba, who am I? Mustafa or Mufasta? <laughs> Mufasa. You are Mustafa. <laughs> Mustafa. Mustafa is my favorite part of a of the Lion King. Okay. What, when the dad dies, you sick bastard. <laughs> His name's Mufasa. I know it's Mufasa. Mustafa. Yeah. I said Mustafa. Yeah. Mustafar from Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mustafar is. Yeah. A... Speaking of which, I would totally vacate on Mustafar. Oh, would you? Yeah. Little trip. A little little gondola through the lava. Yeah. Gondola lava. <laughs> yeah. And then See, um, you eat a restaurant called the High Ground. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep, they serve uh, lamb chops. Because you have to like funny. Yeah, they serve <laughs> they serve roasted potatoes. Yeah, yep, All black and chicken. Yeah. yeah. What were those? What were those things? They were like the aliens who are from Mustafar, and they were like in the Senate, and they were like lizard looking dudes. They had names. Gosh dang it! It wasn't like Mustafarians or anything like that. Well, we're talking about Star Wars or real life? Probably real life. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! All right. Let's get to my number one, just because the people, most people probably tuned out by now. So, yeah. Yeah. My number one album so far of 2022 is This World is Going to Ruin You by Vane. Uh, they're also known as Vane FM. But Sounds like a family album. It is a family album. <laughs> uh, but those of us who've been around for a while just call them Vane because we've always known them as Vane. Oh. Um, they're, they're a metalcore, hardcore band. And this, this album for a couple reasons is really cool. First off, it's heavy and angry as hell. And I love that. Uh, most songs are about one minute and a half to one minute long or two minutes. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not very long, but it is, it is so aggressive and in your face and it packs such a punch. But let me tell you a quick story about what happened to Vane right before this came out. So this is, and I just want to preface this by saying this has all been disproven, but it was a rumor that circulated on Twitter. There is a rumor that at their show with the band Military Gun, that the singer was playing, the Vane was playing, and the singer broke the mic stand. And uh, apparently that was so controversial. And people were like, that's so disrespectful to the venue. To and break so, a mic stand? I know. Oh, it, this story is ridiculous. So there's this whole thing about Vane broke a mic stand. Can you believe that? And then... There was a rumor that the same night, the members of Military Gun jumped somebody in the parking lot who didn't like their music. So it was one of those like, whoa, those are two cr pretty crazy bands. And this happened right before the Bane album came out. So I'm not here to judge. We all have our own decisions to make in life. But based on that alone, that whole, oh my gosh, Vane broke a mic stand. People were like canceling their pre-orders. Um, and this is just my opinion. This is a Waffles only opinion. Way crazier stuff happens to venues 
than mic stands breaking. Mic stands are like 30 bucks. And I personally have seen way crazier crap be broken. Anyway, so that night, this whole story is going about, oh my gosh, Vane. And then people are like, their album's probably not going to sell very well. And people being like, maybe I even shouldn't buy it. It was, if you're listening and you were there, you know. It was a little bit like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like group thing of people being like, they'd seen their friends say it was a bad thing. So they go, maybe it is a bad thing. And then the next day, Vane and Military Gun were like, this is maybe the stupidest rumor we've been involved in ever. And they were like, no, the mic stand was not broken. And someone got video of when Military Gun jumped somebody and they were playing a game outside and somebody came and like pushed them and they're going, oh, hey, that was them getting jumped. So it was like, and then what was so funny is the next day, Military Gun made shirts that said, be careful, we'll jump you in the parking lot or something like that. It was nice. super funny. And Vane did this whole like, uh, y'all better watch out. Or they, they made signs for their merchandise that were like tip for the broken mic stand. Anyway, so uh, because of that, there was a little bit like, ooh, people trying to cancel Vane for being too aggressive. And first off, they're a metal band and they're a hardcore band. They're just aggressive. That's the nature of the music. But then also to have all of that and then they release an album that is a solid 10 out of 10. It was just like the most beautiful icing on the cake. This is me icing a cake. It looks like I'm um, like pouring sprinkles. For all of you know, Waffles has his pants off and is. (laughs) And I'm currently icing a cake. (laughs) Um, But anyway. So I like how all of the Vane fans, uh, according to your impression of them, come from like Southern California. (laughs) <laughs> like just your your impressions. Oh my gosh! Did you oh my god! Vane. My name's like they're, all, like the they're Kardashians. And... They're Kardashians. Oh. All of them. Yo, Bane, if like, the Kardashians totally. are into Vane, I would lose my mind. That'd be so sick. My favorite album sick. by Vane is Arizona. Be super sick. Anyway, uh, if you like angry music or you need something to work out to, even if you're not into like regularly listening to angry music, the new Vane album, "This World Is Going to Ruin You." is incredible the song the killing womb holy bananas good the luck. killing womb the killing womb if you are in public and you listen to that song best of luck to anyone around you because you will hit them you will hurt them it's great it's also it's also stooge stooge it is also great grocery shopping music because when you're at the grocery store and people are starting to piss you off because they don't understand how to act normal in public. You hit him in the ankles. Vein. You, you, you hit him. We hit him with the cart. <laughs> yeah. Hit him with the cart. There and is they, nothing that will take a person, a grown adult, down faster than a cart shot to the mm-hmm. ankles. Man. And it's like, you know what, Linda? You should have looked before you turned. You deserve to get hit by that grocery cart. Get out of the freaking produce section. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Anyways, all right. Those are our top three albums of 2022. For both so of far. us. So far. Of course. The second half might have some of the bangers. Uh, Stooges already mentioned the new Jack White, so that could be really sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Indeed, a Rooney Dooney. Indeed, a Rooney Dooney. Are you ready now to transition from the main topic into trivia, my friend? You bet your sweet googly mooglies. All They're right, really ladies and dead. gentlemen. Today's segment of trivia is brought to you by Air. Air. You can't live without it. All right, Waffles. <laughs> this is by no way a coincidence. I mean, wait. I can't even think. This is a total coincidence. I said we did not plan this. I'm oh, going to have to edit go. that out because it's going to sound like we planned it. But yeah. I swear we didn't plan this. And this is going to reveal why I was like, oh, my gosh, before we started recording. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we're talking about Vane? No. Oh. You didn't talk about Vane before. What could I have uh, freaked out about that sh- Forget it. Forget it. Let me just get into it. Everyone Go for it. Like, just do it, Brent. Just announce who we're... We're doing this on My Chemical Romance today. You are my favorite friend I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> but Thank the you reason, so much. The reason that's so crazy, though, yeah. Waffles, is look at your damn shirt. I'm wearing a My Chemical Romance shirt. <laughs> this was not planned. This is so sweet. Also, because Stooge doesn't know My Chemical Romance. Yeah. So this is really... This is like a birthday present. Thank you. I love What's you. The, are they the ones that sing the song... She had a boyfriend that looked like a That's woman. the killers. Oh, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Could not be more different, but relatable. I get you. Same time period. Yeah. <laughs> the killers. We should do one about Oops. them. I know very little, but anyway. 
Whoops. Yeah, I don't really know Kay. my chemical romance very well. This MCR. is going to be so fun. MCR, MCR is my cool Ken. kids call them. OGs call um, them my Ken. Just saying. Just saying. Mm. All right. What do what do the uh, people call uh, MCR? What are they called? People that call them MCR. You said OGs call them my Ken. What am oh. I if I call them MCR? You're, you're um an uh, uh, Olive Garden. I don't know, dude. I couldn't think of anything fast enough. We can just move on. Nice. All right. Yeah. Olive Garden. Because OG Olive Garden. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I've got 15 questions. Hell yeah. And we're going to see how you do. Okay. Okay. I'm going to um, be so embarrassed if I get like none of these. <laughs> that would be funny, right? Yeah. But I don't think you will. I think you'll get most of these probably. Okay. So are you, are you ready, Waffles? I'm so freaking ready. All right. Here we go then. Question number one. Okay. Can you name the current band members of My Chemical Romance? Absolutely. Gerard Way, Mikey Ray, Ray Toro, and Frank Iero. That is correct. Uh, Very good. That is, we'll give you one point for each of those. You only got four points. Whoa. All right. Self esteem. How, how many studio albums do they have? Not counting live albums or compilations, studio albums. If we're not counting compilations, four. You're correct. Yep. Very good. All right. Can you name those albums? Absolutely. In I order. Can. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I brought you my bullets. You brought me your love. Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge, The Black Parade, and Danger Days, The True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys. You just earned yourself four more points. Waffles, you are at nine points after three questions. This is, this is like a record. This is the best I've ever done. Yeah. This Except the for the Taylor you... Swift one. That was the best I've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Okay. Next question. Uh, Gerard Way was inspired to start MCR after this historical event. 9-11. That is correct. Very sad that that happened. Mm-hmm. But my chemical romance came because of it. So yep. yeah, um, the first MCR album was produced by Jeff or G off, however you want to pronounce it, Rickley, who is the front man of this band. Thursday. Very good. Another point. Oh, You're gonna, I, love I wonder if you Thursday. get a hundred percent. Let's see if we can do hundred percent. I've never got a hundred percent on anything except for that one drugs test. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> In two thousand and five. My Chemical Romance collaborated with this band for a cover of the Queen and David Bowie classic, Under Pressure. That which is was used. That is correct. I didn't have to finish the question. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I, I used to jam that with my dad all the time. Which The original or the new? The, uh, the, the, the cover. The MCR used ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. During filming of this musical video, this musical video? Oh this musical gosh. video. <laughs> during filming. During of, filming of The Music Man. Yeah. During filming of, of, of the music video for this song, Way suffered torn ligaments in his ankle and Briar a burn to the leg, which caused a severe staph infection that needed constant monitoring in the hospital. Consequently, the band was forced to cancel a few tour dates. Which song? That is the video for Famous Last Words. That is correct. And it was actually one of the reasons Bob did not play in the band anymore after when he was, because uh, he was the drummer. After he got burned and had to be monitored all the time, he couldn't tour anymore, so he quit. That is insane. Great video. We should get together and watch that, regardless of the show. It's okay. a great video. Yeah. Do they have the clip in there where they get burned and stuff? Yeah, it's sick. No, I'm just kidding. No, they don't. <laughs> The, this band was the supporting act for the first leg of the Black Parade World Tour. Okay, this is where I'm going to miss answers. Because I don't know, dude. I'm just going to guess Hawthorne Heights. That is incorrect. Ah, Your first it. miss is actually Rise Against. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Ah. See, back to Southern California. Yeah. Yep. All right. Six shows were canceled on the third leg of that tour when several members and crew from both My Chemical Romance and Muse had this. Uh, I'm guessing it was like a disease or something. Is it? Not a disease. But they ate something and they got this. Food poisoning? Yeah. You got, uh... you got it. <laughs> I thought that maybe the answer was like a bad time. I don't know, like <laughs> bipolar disorder. They, they, were just, they were having tummy rumbles. Anal yeah. herpes. Um, what? <laughs> All right, man. Okay. The <laughs> My Chemical Romance performed a called song 
Every snowflake is different, just like you, on an episode of this children's show. Yo Gabba Gabba. You are correct, correct. And on the Yo Gabba Gabba record is the only place you can have that song on vinyl. Mm. Do you have it? I don't. You don't. Can you believe? Can you even believe? Fake fan. <sighs> All right, here we go. In okay. 2014, My Chemical Romance released a greatest hit album called what? Shoot, this is the one I don't have. <sighs> May Death Never Stop You. Yeah, very good. You got there it. There it is. What year did they break up originally? Officially? Yeah. I think it was 2013. You got it. Look at yeah. you. Look at you. I used to have a hoodie with the like the birth and death date of my chemical romance oh, on nice. it. Yeah. Uh name. What was the name of uh Gerard's 2014 solo album? Hesitant Alien. Very good. Damn, look at you. Yeah. All right. What is the name of the single that uh My Chemical Romance released this month, which is the first single they've released since 2014? Foundations of Decay. And Very oh my good. gosh, that song slaps. And the last question of so the excited. trivia. Okay. So maybe we just need to pick bands that you're very familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> well. so I feel good about myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, Desolation Row was featured on this 2009 DC film soundtrack. Watchmen. That is correct. Yeah, you man. You only missed two. Well, one kind of, two kind of, but the I got poisoning and the Nice. That is the most I've ever had. This nice. was a great feeling. Thank you. Um. You're welcome. Oh, I was going to say something just barely about my chemical romance. Shockingly. Are you oh, going to see them? Um, no, because they're, they're not coming anywhere near us. And uh, the closest they're coming, I believe, is Denver. And those tickets were gone. And, <laughs> and also, uh, I love my chemical romance. They have been a big part of my life since I was 11. I've seen them twice before they broke up. Uh, so that was cool. But like that, the most I ever paid to see them back in the day was 60 bucks. These tickets are several hundred dollars. So it's one of those like inflation. It, it's one of those like I go, yeah, that's cool, but like I've seen them. I saw them when they were not reuniting. So it's not as big of a deal to me as it is some, to us, some other people that didn't get to see them. Mm -hmm. um, what I was going to say is that when I was a missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, is when my chemical romance broke up. And I didn't know, but my family told me. And you would have thought they were telling me a family member died because they all emailed me and said, we have some bad news and we really hope that you're going to be okay. My chemical romance broke up. <laughs> and it was like, I was sad, <laughs> but like I was a missionary. So I wasn't like actively listening to them, but still it was like, they knew how big of a, a big of a deal it was to me. So they were just like, are you prepared for some news? Are you ready for some news? Anyway. So are you ready together. for some news? Are you ready for some news? Yeah. They said it to me just like that. Nice. Anyway, that was great trivia, dude. Thank you. I and, no problem. and look at you going out of your comfort zone, looking at the old My Chemical Romance. The MCR. You know, there's a lot of listeners uh, who I think also enjoy the music that you listen to, so I'm just trying to be a man of the people, you know? There you go. You're a man of the pee hole. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Um, so, for Q&A today, uh, I was a little bit late getting it up onto our Instagram, so we don't have a ton, but uh, <laughs> we have one from you our buddy. One job, Waffles. Seriously. <laughs> and then, uh, were you? did you think of anything? Any questions? Yeah. We talked about this before. But what size is your shoe? I wear 12s. What size do you wear? I wear about 12s too. It depends. Same. I'm getting like Uggs. I have to get like a size up. I've never worn Uggs. Do Uggs fit snug? Yeah. They snug Uggs? Ugg Uggs are snug. Yeah. Uggs are snugs. Get a Some size those... up. If you're getting Uggs, get a size up. You gotta, you gotta up, those, up those Uggs. Yep. I don't know why that sounds dirty to say. Oh, a thug. Um, anyway, so our, our question we've got comes from our good buddy, Nikki No Good 315. Nikki No Good. Nikki, we love you. Thank you so much for always supplying with questions. The question he asks What band or artist would you like to see a biopic made of that has obviously not been made yet? A biopic of a band or artist that has not I mean, been made. I obviously instinctually go to the Black Keys, but you know, if we are going to go like, you know, something crazy, like I'm trying to think of an artist who's had just something wild, insane life. Yeah. Um, 
have they done one about Bowie yet? Is there a Bowie biopic? I I've heard of one that's on like Amazon Prime. It's not like super big, high profile. So they should do one about David Bowie. That's kind of surprising. But that movie would be so long. David Bowie had the craziest life. I bet he did. Who would play David Bowie? Ooh, good question. Tilda Swinton. She could do it. <laughs> she could do it. She's got the no, pale no. white skin. Dame Judi Dench. That's who it is. Oh, <laughs> Helen Mirren. Yeah, they could all do it, man. I'd watch that in a heartbeat. Um, Honestly, Gaga could do it, too. <laughs> uh, who would play David Bowie? You know who should probably do it is um, Skarsgård. Who's the Skarsgård kid? Oh, the one from It and it? all that. That is, it's not Stellan. Peter. I think it's Peter Skarsgård. Is it? I don't I'm, know. Doubt, I'm doubting myself now. But yeah, the guy that played Pennywise. He could, yeah. do, it. He could do it easy. Because you need is, somebody. Is he, is he good looking enough? That's a good question. The thing that I would say he would work is because and this is no disrespect to him or David Bowie. His eyes are kind of Super big. Super disrespectful. His eyes are kind of big and his cheekbones go out around them and down, which is how David Bowie's face was. So you would need somebody that has a little more gaunt of a face. Yeah. A gaunt face? His face was gaunt. Is that like yeah. is that is that something people say? I've never heard that before. He had a very gaunt face. Yeah, gaunt is a, it's a word to describe like slightly skinny and not as uh, full. Oh, so that w- people wouldn't use that to describe us then. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nobody would ever call us gaunt. What's dude. the opposite of gaunt? Fat? Like, <laughs> he's got a fat face. <laughs> <laughs> that could be it. <laughs> um, other people that would be good to have a biopic about. Uh, Iggy Pop. I've always wanted an Iggy Pop biopic. Oh, that because would be that pretty man's wild, nuts. Too. Yeah, he's nuts. Um. So even, but actually, that could have some crossover because he and David Bowie are really good friends. So what we could do, <gasps> have a cinematic a universe. Yeah, a cinematic <gasps> universe that where would they all be crossover. Dope. That'd be way sick. Because they did a lot like Elvis and Johnny and, you know, all these different artists. And Shut up. I just had the best idea. Are you so ready for this? Stooge, are you so ready for this? Do you know, <laughs> do you know the band, the Traveling Wilburys? No. You don't know the Traveling Wilburys? Is that a commonly known band? I've literally absolutely. Never heard of that. So the Traveling Wilburys was arguably one of the very first supergroups ever, and it consisted of Tom Petty, Roy Orbison, uh, George Harrison, um, Jeff Lynne from ELO. Why like, did they break up? They they never well half of or them they died. Or just kind of a project. Oh. Yeah, it was a project they did half for of fun. Them di- half of them died. <laughs> <laughs> like, <at> the <laughs> <laughs> like the ghost of George Harrison is near me, and I, dude, dude, they. <laughs> oh, and Bob Dylan was the Traveling Wilburys too. Um, anyway, what would be cool though is that they do a biopic about each member of the Traveling Wilburys, and then the like the Avengers. It all comes together into one cinematic moment. But if you don't know who that is, then what was the point of this conversation? To defeat Disco, um... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but no, like a cinematic universe of biopics would be great. A mu- musical biopics, yeah, yeah, yeah. yep. I'm actually down with that. A Tom Petty one, just in general, would be really good. Tom Petty had a very fascinating musical career. Mm-hmm. Yeah, funny guy too. Funny guy. Yeah. Um, another person, maybe this is more niche, but uh, more niche. The band The Velvet Underground is wildly important for music after the '60s, and they were very controversial uh, because they were the first band to ever openly sing about drugs, instead of it like in the '60s. Most songs about drugs were metaphors. I've uh-huh. been on the desert on a horse with no name, that kind of stuff. And then Velvet Underground had their song Heroin. And it was very openly like, this is what it's like to do heroin. So uh, most music from the 60s on has the Velvet Underground to thank for lyrically, musically. And also the Velvet Underground. Oh, another. I'm, I'm sorry. My brain is. I love this question. My brain is not, like firing off with answers. Uh, the Velvet Underground was one of the very first, like, do-it-yourself bands that actually went somewhere. Uh, because up until then, if you know the music industry, um, you had to be like, it was like a job. You had to audition to labels, and you had to sort of become an employee. There wasn't really, like, garage bands. 
But the Velvet Underground is one of the very first ones that actually made a job out of it. And then the other thing I thought of is The Clash. The Clash was the first garage band to actually make a career. Uh, because up until then, same thing. You had to be signed to a label. You had to sort of go on TV all the time. You had to be an employee. But The Clash was the first band to start off with friends in high school that didn't care about that stuff and just wanted to play big arenas. So mm-hmm. that'd be cool. That would be cool. Um, I think, have they done a Rat Pack one? Have they done anything from Sinatra or Dino or Free and Sammy? That's a good question. Uh, I don't think they have. That would be another good one to do. Like Absolutely. Um, a, a universe. Yeah. So. Talk about fascinating lives, too. All the members of the Rat Pack had very interesting lives. Who's yeah. the one I'm leaving out? I thought it was just the Sammy, three of them. Frank. Isn't it, oh, isn't it Frank Sinatra? One. Danny, or uh, Dino, and then and Sammy, Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. Is there a fourth oh. one? I thought there was, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't know. I don't maybe know you're thinking either. of the Brat Pack <clears throat> in the 80s. Molly Ringwald. Yeah. That's it. I got That's those who you're thinking of. Stupid Molly Wong. Ringwald. Stupid Emilio Estevez. We get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a great question, though. Well, uh, let us know in the comments. What biopic do you think needs to get made of any artists that have not been made yet? Um, I feel like there's a bunch of biopics, but I can only think of like a few good ones. <laughs> so we need more good ones. What would be one of the good ones? Like um... uh, Bohemian Rhapsody was very good. Okay. Um, I thought Rocket Man was really good. Straight Outta Compton was really good. I still haven't seen. I, I've seen the the Queen one, Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm-hmm. Haven't seen Rocket Man. I haven't seen Straight Outta Compton. Either. Rocket Man was really good. Um, the thing about biopics is, um, just my quick little tangent on this. Um, depending on the artist, you have to know just a little bit about their lives to know how it's going to go. Rocket Man, especially Elton John, has lived a very hard and sad life. And so you got to know that it's not going to be an uplifting movie. It is eventually towards the end because he sort of uh, makes lemonade out of lemons. But for so long, it is uh, struggles with abuse. He was in really abusive relationships. Uh, Of course, he had to hide his sexuality for years. So it it is like hard to watch at some point. Straight Outta Compton is also really interesting, Um, but for the same reason, because they went through so much too. I think Walk the Line, that's probably the most popular Oh, Walk the Line was great. That's a good movie. Yeah. And the, the, the new Elvis one's coming out like soon, soon real soon with Tommy. Yeah. Hanks. Do you think yeah. it's going to be any good? Pro- I'll see it. <laughs> I don't even like Elvis that much, but it looks interesting. Let's and see. I've also heard that the soundtrack has Elvis versions of modern pop songs like Toxic by Britney Spears. So that itself will get me to go. Okay. Um, but yeah, good question. All right. Yeah. Eventually, there'll be a Nirvana <clears throat> biopic, and it's going to be a mess. Oh, geez. Uh, it's going to be a mess. It'll be tough. Tim- Timothy Chalamet is Kurt Cobain. Uh, I didn't have any more questions. Did you think of anything besides No, I think, I, think, I think we covered that one pretty good. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. We appreciate it very much. Yeah. All right, Stooge. Any other last musings? Any thoughts before we put our bow on the end? No, I, um, I think we covered everything well. I think it's now just time for our, um, our, our somewhat sad announcement. Okay. Or it could be good, depending on your thoughts on this show. I think so. it ultimately be good, but, yeah. you know. Um, so, Stooge and I, in talking of, of things for the Dead Wax show, have decided to take the month of June off. We are not going to be actively uploading new episodes to YouTube and to Spotify and Apple Podcasts through June. Um, just as a way to reset our brains. We've been doing this actively every week since we since started. November. We haven't had a break yet. We haven't. So We've this is our first week. break. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, we, of course, are not going to be completely silent. We are going to be using our Instagram and our TikTok to be making lots of Dead Wax content, getting lots of thoughts. But for actually uploading episodes, we are taking the month of June off just to sort of recharge our batteries, get some new ideas. Just a maybe small hiatus. Maybe rethink some things. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be back. But, you know, just for June, you know. Yeah. You have to find some other way to get through your Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I also, do you know when like a sitcom goes on hiatus and then they come back and an actor has been replaced? It's what's what, going to happen with me <laughs> is that it's Stooge and it's it's just like some super skinny guy with a fake beard and he's like, "Hi, hey, I'm Waffles." Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so we are going to still be around. We're not like disappearing or anything. Yeah. But uh, we are not going to be having any episodes in June. It'd be a good time for us just to, um, you know, recharge our batteries and and. Uh, also just rest a little bit because here's the thing you want some tea y'all want some tea i got some tea for you doing the dead wax show i'm gonna be honest with you Stu. i don't think i've said this to you either has been one of the greatest things i've ever done this has been so much fun i have genuinely loved doing this it is 
made our relationship so much stronger. Mm -hmm. It's tiring though. <laughs> it's exhausting. <laughs> and it's not because like, it's hard talking, but like we, we put a lot of ourselves into this and it does, it gets it takes tiring. Time. It takes time. And we don't, we're not getting paid for this. So we already have our jobs, our lives, our families, and we do this on the side. So a break, I think is good for all of us. Yeah. Just a quick summer break, you know, a little summer break. Yeah. It's not even a whole summer break. It's four weeks. Yeah. Go watch your new Stranger Things. And by the time it's done, <laughs> we'll, we'll be, be coming back. back. We're, we're at the, we're, they're dropping another couple episodes when we come back too. But um, yeah, we're hoping to use, take this, like Waffle said, and kind of generate more fun content. So that's the ultimate goal. It, it, it's, yeah. you know, a little bit of a break, you know, which is good for us because, you know, this is episode 30. We've done it for 30 weeks straight. And then to come up with stuff to, to entertain you guys more. Yep. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully that's what we've been doing, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's a loose, a loose uh, definition of entertainment. There two you monkey, go. Two monkeys with, with phones. <laughs> exactly. And that is the ultimate like way to sum up this podcast is two yeah. monkeys with cameras. Yeah. Um, but this is a plug. So please do follow us on social media because we are what kind of plug. <laughs> what kind of plug, Stooge? You're an expert. <laughs> <laughs> Answer the questions, dude. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not answering talking. the I'm question. Just <laughs> yeah. So, uh, please follow us on social media if you're not already, because for the month of June, that's where you're going to be seeing us. So, our TikTok and our Instagram and our Twitter is at Dead Wax Show. It will be posting stories, posts, videos, that kind of stuff. Um, and we've also got ideas for like really fun ways to get everyone involved. This is not Stooge and I disappearing from the internet. No, we would never do that. We need your guys' validation too much to ever disappear. <laughs> um, we don't want to be Barb <laughs> on season one of Stranger Things. Um, uh, I was going to say, actually, keep it keep an eye out for our social media because this week we're going to be announcing kind of a cool contest. Mm -hmm. So make sure this is Get into just, it. This is part of a gimmick to get you to follow us, but also an announcement like, hey, we got something kind of fun coming up. So there you go. Yeah, everything all at once, always. I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. You know? <laughs> yeah, our our sugar coating is already too high for this show. So, mm -hmm. yeah. anyway, all right. So there you go. Uh, we'll have a new episode in a month. But other than that, please follow us on social media and follow us personally. Our page is right here below us because we'll of course be posting a lot of the cross con uh, cross posting, cross posting the content. So cross promotion. Are you posting? stroking your handle? Yes, my handle. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Why did you use the word stroking? That's like... what? Are, are you caressing? <laughs> what are you supposed to say? Petting? Yeah, there you go. That's the best Heavy one, petting? petting? Yeah. Uh, okay. <gasps> oh, no. Jeez, this is going to be mad. Yep. Uh, we should all go listen to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. That made me think of that. Okay. So everyone has some homework. Follow us on social media. Comment below what biopic you think needs to get made. And then also tell all your family and friends about the Dead Wax Show. Yeah. All of them. And get a tattoo of the Dead Wax. <laughs> Stooge and I are going to get matching tattoos, but it's going to be like Tenacious D's ass tattoos, where it's you know? half of the Dead Wax logo. So when you put our butts together, it's the whole logo. Um, we're probably going to have to get like Dead Wax uh, butt plugs now <laughs> with like, the logo. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember I was so nervous about showing the Mom Jeans album just had their bare butts? And we've gone... <laughs> So far from that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, it will be done. So you can quit hearing the phrase butt plug on your Memorial Day. Uh, once again, thank you to everybody for listening. Thank you for supporting. And of course, as always, please use this opportunity to get out of the groove. And for once in your measly life, get into the dead way.